Thanks for taking your time to join us. I'm going to talk today about a very sophisticated technology that has made the transition from research to real world applications. And I want to talk about and emphasize some of those applications to introduce this technology. <clears throat> now, notice that I am terming this displacement mapping. That's because when we monitor motion using a satellite in space, we're monitoring motion in all three dimensions. So we have not only subsidence and, and inflation, we also have north, south, east, and west. So it's a multi-dimensional displacement. The technology we're going to be talking about is what we call PSNSAR, Permanent Scatterer Interferometric SAR. And let's take a look at that word. We're talking about things that are persistent scatterers. Now, a, a scatterer is something that gives a strong radar return. It could be the, a metal roof on a building. It could be a power pole or a, a pylon. Uh, it could be some big boulders out in the countryside, but it's something that always gives a strong return. And because it's persistent, in other words, it's always there, always strong, we can look at that same point, image after image after image over periods of time, even up to years. So we monitor these persistent scatterers. The technology we use is interferometry, which means we're looking at the interference pattern of the phase of the radar signal. Very precise uh, science and mathematics behind this technology. And then the SARS, of course, our synthetic aperture radar. That's our satellite borne radars. Now you'll see the same technology, sometimes called permanent scatterers instead of persistent scatterers, same thing. Sometimes we use distributed scatterers instead of these permanent point scatterers. Now time series DINSAR is sort of the original name because that's what we're looking at, a time series. We can have 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 images collected over a period of time, and we look at that time series to understand what's happening to that particular point in time. Sometimes you see this called SBAS, small baseline analysis. It's really just another way of analyzing this time series DINSAR. So all these names really refer back to the same technology. OK, what do we mean by time series INSAR? When we compare two radar images at the phase layer, if we see differences in that phase, we can, we can quantify that as changes, minute changes in the elevation. But of course, we have a lot of problems. Every electronic system has noise. Well, if we have enough images, like I say, 20 to 40 images, we can average the noise and it, you know, noise kind of goes toward flatline if you average enough scenes. If we're gonna do these precise measurements of the earth, we have to have a dem of the earth. So we have some kind of a relative base to look at. But obviously any errors in your dem are gonna translate into your final answer. But if you have the same dem for every image, then the dem error starts being a constant. We can look for a way to extract that. And then another one a lot of people don't think about is suppressing atmospheric effects. You always hear radar can see through the clouds, which is true, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have an effect. It does affect the phase. So high moisture content, clouds will change the phase and that will introduce noise into the image. Again, if you have a large number of images, you can start to average that out. If you work somewhere in a dry climate like my colleague Brian in Arizona, you don't have so much atmospheric problems. You're in Eastern United States, Western Europe, you may have a lot of moisture variations. So that's a problem. Also, it's not just any 30 or 40 images. They have to be the correct images, appropriate images. They have to be interferometrically matched pairs, every single one of them. So to select these images, to optimize the software, and then adjust the processing regimen tends to require an expert. Obviously, if you're going to hire an expert to do a project of this complication, it's going to take a week of his time and his knowledge. You can end up spending a lot of money to get this kind of information. So a decade ago, when Brian and I first started talking about this, it was expensive for people to get this kind of information. It was not a cost effective solution. As I started looking at trying to bring this solution into our Erdos Imagine software, it became clear to me that just giving people the software wasn't going to work because people who, whose job is to do something like run a power plant, operate a mine, uh, monitor the roads in a city, 
they're not going to learn this technology. So just giving them the software was not a solution. And so what I've gone towards in the software, and I'll show you this later, is we have a partnership with a company that has this expertise and we deliver this as a service. So we have an imagine a way to do this interferometry with just two images. So with two images, we can get a rough look at our area. It has dam noise, it has atmospheric noise, it has signal noise, but we can get a rough look at it. Once you find some area in your study zone that you think you have a problem, you can request this time series DINSIR as a service from our partner company, Planet Tech. And they're going to look at this, make a cost estimate. If you have a study done, you're going to get the information back as a shape file. We'll deliver that shape file to you. Or we have tools online where you can analyze your data online. OK, here's how we've integrated it into Imagine. I've actually put this access point into a couple different drop down lists in Imagine. So we have these things we call the radar utilities, the various radar utilities, and one of them is a time series displacement service request. This is not a function you run. This is a request for a service. And we also have it under the interferometry drop down list because, of course, we're talking about interferometry. So here I have an example image. I generated this image, and this is actually the study area in Arizona that Brian's going to talk about. But I generated this image with two scenes. But you can see I have some of those errors I talked about. Up here in the mountains, we're seeing it's not flat. It, you know, we're lo it's looking as if these areas in the mountains are, are, are going up or going down. Well, we know they didn't do that. These are dem errors. We can see down in here kind of some wispy areas. You know, kind of looks a little bit like clouds, but of course this is not a cloud image, but this could well be atmospheric effects. There were moisture differences here. Maybe there were clouds in one of these scenes and it caused an error here. The point is I can do a rough analysis with our existing ERDAS software. Find the area that's important to me. These dark features, these are major subsidence features. We'll take a closer look later, but I know this is an area that I need to take a look at. So I draw an AOI, transfer that over here, tell them what kind of study I want to do, give them some contact information and click OK. That transfers this information into an email and sends that email to our partner for an evaluation on it. Now, I don't have to even do this from a, a, a radar image. Here's an optical image of a mine area. Here's a map of a mine area. As long as it's geocoded information, I just hit from the inquire box, transfer it to the GUI and request my service study. OK, why am I so anxious to introduce this technology? Because there's a lot of applications here. You know, we're going to talk today about water aquifer monitoring, very, very similar, of course, with hydrocarbon extraction. But we have all kinds of other mining, open pit mines and underground mines. City services, I want to take a look at that a little bit. All these things are important applications where this information is high value, high time importance, and there's really no other way to get it. Let me, let me talk about these a little bit. Here's an area of hydrocarbon extraction. And you can see we've got a lot of subsidence here, a little bit of subsidence out in this area, and some more back over here. But if this was your basin, your, your area, how would you know to put your differential GPS here to get your maximum measurement? Or how much time would you spend getting points out here that are just wasted information? It, it, there's no other cost effective way to get it without this technology. And why is it important? Here we have this high subsidence area. Here's our oil well pumping. So of course the, the highest substance is near the, but if this ground shifts too much, you're gonna break your pipe. It, it, it costs a million dollars to drill one of these pipes. So this is a major error. Mining, real important in mining. We have mine operators who have people out there working, people at risk all the time. They have to monitor these mines. At the same time, we have the government trying to monitor this stuff to see what's happening. And this has become particularly important in Europe because there's some cities like Cologne, Paris. These cities have had mining for hundreds or thousands of years, and these entire huge modern cities have old mines underneath them, and we're trying to monitor what's happening underground. When something goes wrong at a mine, it's big. Here, here's an example where the road has fallen in, right? You want to catch this stuff before someone gets hurt and damage is done. 
OK, I'll go into this stuff in more detail later on, but just as a quick look, this is an example of the sort of data set you would get from our partner company, Planetech. We call it the Reticus service, and we're looking at a mining area. Every green point here is a point that's stable with time. These are persistent scatterers that are saying nothing has happened. But these red ones are saying something's happening here a whole lot. So the mine operator or the regional monitor of this area would know they don't need to waste their time here, but they maybe need to come over here with a differential GPS, send a geologist in there and find out what's going on. This is the value of this information. It highlights exactly and precisely where your problems might be. And not only are these just red points, every one of these points is actually a time series plot. So I've got here five plots because there's five points in, in the, at, at this signal here. Every one of these points here is one of these images in time. So here's my time series here, okay? I've got images from December of 2015 through 2016 and every one of these points. So you can see I've got maybe 30 different images stacked up. I measure the difference between every one of these points and I can put together a graph. We'll, we'll go into that more later in, in, in the detailed study, but here's why it's important. Uh, we in fact have a service to try and monitor this kind of stuff because anytime you have water or, or sewage drainage going underneath your roads, you have these kind of dangers. And in, in particular, this is a problem if this was a gas pipeline. You do not want a gas pipeline to break in your neighborhood. So monitoring this kind of stuff is very cost effective and very important to our societies. And they have big impacts. Now here's an example of one of these studies. It, it, it's an area we monitor continuously in Northern Italy for their infrastructure. And here we've taken the, the uh, subsidence data that we get from Planetech and brought it into what we call the Imagine, or Das Imagine Incident Analyzer. All this here is the result of a satellite overpass. So the satellite was passing over. We collected multiple scenes over multiple time periods and put together this data set. And we can put what we call here a heat map. So when things are red, that means there's a lot of activity. When, when they're blue and green, there's not much going on. So if you're in charge of these cities, like this city here, Cezano, they need to start focusing on this area, right? This city here needs to start focusing on this area. They don't have a problem over here. So it helps these people direct their mitigation resources in a, in a cost effective and timely way. So I can look at this whole huge area. Here I've got you know over 3000 points. Here I've got 42, I've got almost 5000 points. All these persistent scatterers are distributed in this fashion and I can dig deeper and deeper into this data. Here's a close up look at my heat map. Here's all these different persistent scatterer points that I've got that, that, that create this heat map. But I can dig deeper into it, right? Now I've got my road map underneath. I all every one of these points is, is a, 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 a persistent scatterer for which I have time series plots of the substance that's going on. I have my road map here. I can put my infrastructure map so I can show my water lines, my gas lines, my sewer lines. And if I see something like this, a subsidence feature, and I have a gas pipeline coming across here, I need to summon someone here to take a look. And of course, we can dig deeper and deeper. We can look at every single one of these points in relationship to where they're located, right? If I have a subsidence out here, but there's no pipelines around, it's less important to me. So that, here's a good example of critical infrastructure. We've got a power plant sitting right next to a mine. You clearly do not want the edge of this mine to collapse in when you have this tower sitting here. Monitoring this sort of stuff is important and it's cost effective. Here's a hydroelectric dam in Mosul. Green means everything's stable, no problem. Yellow, well, something's happening. But look at these red points. Do we want a red subsidence point here? This is an anchor point for the mine, sorry, for the dam. There's another red point right here. I would like to know what's going on there. And we've got some red points down by our buildings. Well, if, 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 if the subsiding point is your parking lot, maybe you don't care. But if this subsiding point is right where you have your uh, electric turbines, you need to be concerned about this. And as always, we can dig deeper and deeper into this data. Every one of these dots is a persistent scatterer that has a time series analysis associated with it. So we can inquire very deeply 
into what's going on where. Okay, I'm sorry I had to go so fast, but just consider this you know, an introduction. <laughs>